The Scrabs are considered one of the most deadly creatures on Oddworld. Even the feared Fleetchers stay well away when one of these is in the area. Having evolved perfectly to survive in a seemingly barren desert wasteland, it's no wonder the Scrabs have ended up as one of the toughest creatures encountered in the Oddworld games. Their name is thought to be a combination of Scorpion and Scrab, if I recall correctly, likely referencing their dangerous pointy head that kind of resembles a scorpion's tail and stinger, as well as a crab's legs, colour and hard shell. Indeed, it's like they said, let's try and make the hardest creature ever, and basically created some kind of crustacean centaur with the torso of a very muscular bodybuilder. Does he even lift bro? No, he doesn't even have any arms, yet he's got a bigger six pack than Soulstorm Brewery. It's also interesting to note just how human looking the Scrab's body is. Despite not having arms, they still have a rudimentary shoulder girdle and shoulder blades for some reason. Their head is mainly comprised of a large elongated mouth, sparsely populated with tiny sharp teeth. They have a beak so strong it can snap bones in half with ease. It's also so sharp and long it's perfectly designed to swiftly charge into prey and maim them with one swipe while keeping their own body far away from danger. Not that they need to do that, as they're entirely protected by their hard shell. Perhaps one of the Scrab's most versatile assets, however, are their four muscular crab-like legs that can sprint faster than most creatures on Oddworld, allowing them to gain on their targets and almost immediately take down anything that isn't prepared to run for their lives. Their legs are so powerful, they're perhaps the only thing shown in the games that are often able to outright outrun Abe and catch up to him as he's fleeing. As if that wasn't enough, the Scrabs don't even have to run and then prepare to attack with their mouth, because each of their legs ends in a sharp black nail, I guess you'd call it. Something that they also seem to sport on their upper lip, that they can use to kick opponents down. This means that they don't even need to stop or do any action while chasing enemies, they can just trample right on over them, impaling them with their sharp legs, and then stamping on them some more to completely pulverise their bodies before tearing the flesh from the carcass with their mouths. Scrabs even have a highly muscular tongue with a bony tip on the end for spearing prey, just because why not have another way to cause damage I guess. Scrabs don't have eyes and according to ALF are aware of their environment by sensing the electric fields that are affected by objects and creatures around them. Although he's also claimed that Scrabs navigate by sheer sense of hunger. I think whether intentionally or unintentionally, the gameplay kind of shows this in some ways, such as the way if you jump in a well, they'll be attacking the well you're coming out of before you've even come out of it which just gives them this feeling of instinctually knowing where prey is, or about to be, without even seeing it. Especially in Abe's extras for some reason. I notice the Scrabs always seem to be on high alert and often just dart at you straight away as soon as they can, which really makes them incredibly dangerous creatures. It's quite an interesting thing I noticed actually, in Abe's Odyssey they seem slightly more passive, like they'll take their time before coming after you. They'll do a little bark, but in Abe's extras they don't wait around, they just boom instantly go straight for you. Sometimes I do wonder how Scrabs find anything to eat in their environment. Considering their native land is Scrabania, a place that seems to be a hot dry desert wasteland. However, it is actually full of life and plants such as cacti, as well as many other creatures that have also adapted to live in this harsh environment. In Abe's Odyssey remake New and Tasty, Bolomites from Oddworld Stranger's Wrath were also retroactively shown to live here as well. Where well, it did until that slig squashed it. Speaking of which, on the flip side, the Scrabs themselves have become food too, as the industrialist Magog Cartel sends its forces into their areas to routinely capture Scrabs, take them back to their meat processing plants, and turn them into Scrab cakes to sell as a delicious and nutritious product to consumers. Indeed, despite all the toughness of the Scrabs, despite being one of nature's greatest warriors on Oddworld, even it is no match for a bullet. Having been hunted to near extinction, scrabs that still reside within the depths of Scrabania have managed to avoid the encroachment of the industrialists at the cost of being trapped there. This long-term confinement and isolation has caused the scrabs of Scrabania to become even more violent and aggressive. They're outright, quite literally, cold-blooded killers that are so territorial that their first instinct upon sensing the presence of another of their species is to engage it in ritual-like combat to the death. 
The way the scrabs do this, where they bark and make motions with their legs as they prepare to fight, is a great example of the fact that they were designed to be graceful creatures. It's also interesting to note that the scrabs are aware of how big a threat scrabs are, that as soon as they're in the presence of another one, they'll stop whatever they're doing to face it in battle. This plays into the gameplay, where the scrabs are kind of like the opposite of the paramites in some ways. With paramites you can be around one, but if there's two they'll kill you. But with scrabs, if there's one they'll kill you, but you can be around two. At least for the brief period they're distracted fighting. Lasting for a few seconds, which is longer than most animals last when facing a scrab, it seems that one of Oddworld's only creatures that can put up a fight with a scrab is another scrab. And what a battle it is! The scrabs charge at one another and tussle in some kind of spinning attack that reminds me of the final boss fight of Crash Bandicoot 3 for some reason. In Abe's Exodus you can even possess scrabs and perform this same attack, but what makes this quite notable is that you first have to charge up this shred attack by howling. I feel it's quite unique that once you do this, the game indicates this power by having floating red light things flying around the scrap to indicate its ability to do it and shred its enemies to pieces, unless you completely flop like I did here. Another unique feature about the battle is the way the defeated scrap lets out a kind of weird howl as it dies. which is never heard in any other situations in the game. The howl sounds kind of tribal, I guess. It's a really unique sound, and it's really interesting that this happens after this kind of combat that the Scrabs undertake. The carcass of the defeated Scrab is then jumped on triumphantly by the victor, perhaps to ensure it's deceased and can't ever come back, or perhaps it's done as a symbol of the winner's dominance. In my opinion, I think it's likely the latter, as the way the Scrabs do the fight is really kind of respectful, like some kind of samurai jewel or something. They don't even eat the carcass, this isn't a battle for food, this is purely a battle of territory and dominance. Or maybe they just don't like the shell. Despite the highly territorial nature of the Scrabs of Scrabania, other members of the species shown elsewhere in places filled with greater quantities of food have been portrayed as pack animals that travel about in herds. Alf explained the differences between these two types of Scrabs by saying that female Scrabs form herds, with the leader being the queen, while the males are expelled and left to fend for themselves. This would explain why the scrabs seen in Oddworld Munch's Odyssey don't attack each other and instead hunt in packs. It's because they're the females of the species. Meanwhile, the scrabs of Scrabania are males that have been abandoned and as a result have become extremely territorial. However, apparently the female scrabs still do fight amongst themselves in certain circumstances. Seemingly, the queen of a scrab herd who acts as an alpha scrab will partake in the ritual combat with any other alpha scrabs they come across, to decide who takes leadership of the herd, or of both herds combined if the other alpha also had their own. Their great combative nature makes it no wonder that the scrabs became revered creatures worshipped by the Mudanchi tribe of native Mudokan warriors that made up a once thriving civilization in Scrabania. As a worship, they ended up with a Scrabanian temple that is shown to have a very hard rocky exterior, perhaps reflective of the tough shell of the scrabs themselves. The sacred nature of the Scrabs is shown further by the fact that they make up half of the powerful Mudokan demigod, the Shrikal, which quite predominantly, I'd say, takes its features from the Scrabs' body. The power of Shrikal is harnessed by Abe by gaining the mark of the Mudanchi tribe in Abe's Odyssey after taking on the trials of Scrabania, where he faced the Scrabs and lived. Well, he also has to do the Paramonian trials too, but you know, these trials take Abe through Scrabania, where you really get to see the true beauty of this location. Its dusk-like purple-orange sky perhaps makes it, in my opinion, maybe the most beautiful area in the game, which is saying something because the environments in Abe's Odyssey are really nice looking. These colours, bright sun and harsh desert is also where the scrabs have gotten their colour. Considering they're yellow underneath, but reddy orange on top where they're exposed to the sun, it makes me wonder if scrabs are meant to be all yellow had they originated from other environments. 
Filled with monuments and statues to the sacred animals built by the Mudokans that lived here and worshipped them, it's interesting to note that it is said that the scrubs that inhabit the burial grounds of the Mudanshi are there to act as guardians of the final resting place of the tribe that worshipped them, in repayment for their unwavering loyalty and respect to them, suggesting that scrubs do have a sense of that kind of thing. I don't know how to explain it, but I guess of knowing their allies and respecting those that respect them. Or maybe it's absolute twaddle when some Mudokans saw some scrabs in there and said, oh look, they're clearly guarding the dead Mudokans that once worshipped them, but no, considering scrabs are also seen passively with the native Mudokans in the ending of Abe's Odyssey, perched on top of columns, odd knows how they got them there, and they're not going mental attacking everyone in that room. It does certainly seem that they can live in harmony with other beings in very specific circumstances. In fact, there is concept art for an Oddworld film that shows a scrab pack that are being ridden by outlaws. So it is possible to tame scrabs and for species to have a more closely connected coexistence with them. Lorn Lannan actually specifically spoke about this very recently, saying, Those things would be possible. It would just take some extraordinary understanding to achieve it. Either way, I even get a sense of respect emanating from scrubs when they fight each other. The reason I keep calling it a ritual combat is because it seems to me like there's some kind of respect between the two before they fight. Like it's some kind of ceremony or something. As a result of all these qualities of the scrubs, it really gives them a feeling of being the toughest and most dangerous creature on Oddworld. Or one of them at least. There's no playing about with them. They're your standard, oh you've entered their vicinity, run because they're immediately charging at you to kill you in one hit type of thing. Nature's true prime predators in the games. This type of gameplay and their incredibly iconic and distinct design that is so well crafted and makes them really somewhat elegant but threatening creatures, as well as the harsh but beautiful environment that they reside in, really makes it no wonder that one of the most iconic creatures of the Oddworld franchise are the Scrabs of Scrabania. Hello, follow me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 